Sadhguru, the next question is from Sonia. Namaskaram Guruji. Mm -hmm. I am from Berlin. With increased silence outside, inside noises are becoming very noisy. Could you shed some light on inner vibrations and the inner sound? Whoa! In Berlin? Ah. Usually people don't call me Guruji because uh, Guruji is a honorific. I'm very embarrassed with such things. Sadhguru is a description. Just like saying uh, an orthopedic or an ophthal ophthalmologist or a gynec or a neurologist, just like that, Sadhguru is just a description. I don't mind the description because it says an uneducated guru. Nobody comes and confronts me with scriptures because they know anyway I don't know it. Just to ensure that we don't spend time trying to debate, discuss something that we have no clue about and we have never bothered about. But Guruji is a honorific. Don't do that to me. Uh, I've lived in a certain way, in the sense <laughs> uh, I've lived in such a way that people around me are always confused. What the hell is he about? It's very important for me because if they make any conclusions, then it's very hard to work with them. Confusion means at least you realize you don't know, which is good. If somebody comes to know by a very deep experience, that is fine with me. That's another state. But drawing nice conclusions about somebody is not necessary, drawing bad conclusions about somebody is not necessary. So all honorifics come from this, that people draw positive conclusions about somebody. The value of who I am is only when you simply look at me without any conclusions, you will see you will be so thoroughly confused. You've not paid enough attention to me because most of the time you're sitting, seeing me sitting here in a satsang or this kind of situation. So, you have not seen me in various situations. If you see me in various situations, you will be thoroughly confused. It's a very good thing. That means you are unable to draw a conclusion because conclusion is death. Conclusion means no more possibility. If you draw a conclusion about me, unknowingly, as a seeker, you will draw a conclusion about yourself. That means seeking is over. Once you draw a conclusion, where is the seeking? You calling yourself a seeker is absolutely meaningless. About the vibrations in Berlin, well, outside vibrations have stopped. Is that what she's saying? Oh, the automobiles are not thundering around. Well, I also like to drive and ride, but uh, it's all right. Maybe every year, we should think about this really as a world, as a generation. Every year, three weeks, no automobiles on the road, everybody stays home. Hello? What's the problem? Nothing will happen. Everybody at once, turn off every damn thing in the world. Like school children break for their vacation, all human beings take a break. Oh, every other creature on the planet will celebrate. So if all the machines in Berlin have come to a standstill, the German automobiles are not thundering around. So now, am I understanding the question? She's saying, how to manage interiority or what about the inner vibrations? What is that? Could you shed some light on the inner vibrations and the inner sound, given that outside has become quiet? 
but the inner has become more noisy. Oh. Inner or interiority has not become noisy, it's never been noisy, there is no such thing as noise in that region. It is just that uh, because you are not busy, you're getting preoccupied. Most people normally think they are busy, but if you look at their lives, sixty percent of the time they're just preoccupied with something. This is like uh, chewing the cud, you know. What happened yesterday, you're still chewing. This facility is not there in your body. Cows, goats, sheep, they all have this facility that they can eat today and after a few hours they can bring it back and chew the cud. Such a facility was not given to you in your body, so you have created one in your mind. <laughs> this is an evolutionary problem. You're not willing to come out of the four-legged state that <laughs> you want to chew yesterday's cud. In the southern Indian uh, mysticism and yoga, we look at people and if they are either enjoying or suffering only what has happened in the past. Because of past activity, now they're enjoying something, but doing something totally different now, not understanding that they're just enjoying past benefits and it may run out any time. We say, ayo, palai sadam. Palai sadam means old rice, that means this is old food, enjoying old food. What we ate yesterday, right now it is still, in terms of energy and strength, is still working in our body. Similarly, what we did yesterday or ten years ago or a lifetime ago, maybe still we are benefiting from it. But if you're not doing something right now to enhance this, this will run out. Old food will rot after some time. What was very wonderful will become very nasty after some time. A whole lot of so-called successful people in the world go through this at different stages in their life that they will be enjoying the results and karmas of the past. And they think everything is fantastic, they live wantonly now. One day suddenly it hits them, not necessarily from outside, most of the time it's from within their own psychological structure, their own body goes into such a relapse, they can't believe that this happened to them. This is because you're living on old food. It's important you cook fresh food every day, it's very important. This is why present karma is very important. I want you to understand there is no noise in your interiority. There is no vibration in your interiority, there is no sound in your interiority. It is all in your head. This is because you're chewing the old cud. Now, if you are busy with some activity, you would forget some of the things that are happening in your head today. But once your hands are not engaged, then you see this will go on. So what should I do? Well, we have taught you many ways. You don't try to stop it because you cannot stop it. The only way is you can distance yourself from it. Well, there are many methods to distance yourself. If you're doing Shambhavi or Shunya, definitely there's a powerful process. Otherwise, you can do Isha Kriya. If you don't know any of these things right now, the simple thing is just this. You have to just look at yourself and see. You are a tiny little creature in this vast existence. We don't know where it begins, where it ends. On this little mud ball of a planet, you sit here and you think you're the center of the universe, it's a stupid idea. Everything is from this basis that you think you are the center of the universe. It's a very stupid idea. From this stupid idea, many stupid ideas have come, which is your... which is socially considered intelligence. So you just look at your thoughts, in the context of larger cosmos, now the virus is threatening your life. In the context of your mortality, the things that you think about, 
the things that you think are important, every one of them is stupid. If you see your mind is, your thought, your emotion is utterly stupid, naturally you will create distance. The problem is you think it is smart. And now when it troubles you, you want it little away. No, whatever you think it is smart will sit on your shoulder like a badge. It will not go. It will not leave you. The moment you think you are smart, your thoughts cannot leave you. You cannot close your eyes and sit if you're a very smart guy, just know this. When you know you're a bloody fool, you can close your eyes and sit. In terms of life, in terms of existence, you really nothing, okay? Socially you may be something, among fools, fools will shine. That doesn't mean anything, as a life, as a life, Tomorrow this silly little virus can knock you off. Yes, you are me, I'm saying. It can just knock us off. So whatever great smart things we are thinking doesn't mean a damn thing. If you understand this, naturally there will be a distance between you and your thought process. Once there is a distance between you and your thought process, it doesn't matter what you're thinking at all. Sure.